Hey everyone, my name is Gamer Cory, and welcome back to another Red Dead Online video. Now in today's video, we're going to be going over the same three things that we go over each and every single day. That is where you guys can find Madame Nazar's location, all the different collection sets and their current cycles, and then the other thing that we're going to go over is all of the daily challenges, including the list mode, and then breaking down them in extensive detail. But if you guys are enjoying these types of videos and want to continue seeing these types of videos, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. A like definitely goes a long way here on the channel. It shows your love and support of these types of videos. It tells me that you want me to continue making these videos. And honestly, it just really helps me grow here on YouTube. So please, just spend that couple of seconds. You already clicked on the video anyway, so you might as well go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe down below. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started by going over the different collection sets and their current cycles. Uh, basically, uh, anything I'm going to start with anything that uses the field shovel. So anything that does use the field shovel uh, is going to be a little bit nerfed compared to what it used to be. But it's still a great opportunity at earning money here in Red Dead Online. As uh, I still personally believe this, this is the best way. And it's going to take a lot of convincing to convince me otherwise that there's another opportunity in Red Dead Online to make more money than this. Even though it has been nerfed since the last update. All right, so anything that uses the field shovel, so like the fossils, which will be a part of cycle number two. We have the lost jewelry at cycle number six. The arrowheads at cycle number one. Family heirlooms at cycle number six. And then the coins also at cycle number six. Now the next four sets that I'm about to go over, you don't even need to be a collector at all in order to collect them. But you do need to be a collector in order to sell them. So you're going to want to get that collector bag as soon as you possibly can anyway. But if you want to save up a little bit of items before you get that collector bag so you can make some money right off the bat, you can also do that with these four sets. So we got American Wildflowers, which there's going to be three sets every single day. That's going to be a part of cycle number five. We have the tarot cards at cycle number one. The antique alcohol bottles at cycle number four, and then the bird eggs at cycle number six. And that is all the daily collection sets in their current cycles out of the way. But if you guys do have any questions regarding anything that we just went over, then leave a comment down below so I can hopefully help you guys out the best that I possibly can. Now, the next thing that we're actually going to go over is we're going to go over all the daily challenges. Um, the list mode first, then we're going to follow that up with extensive details. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We got, starting with the daily general challenges, we got one alligators killed, three cooked seasoned big game, four coyotes skinned, five flying birds killed while on a moving train, one hunt the leader completed, we got three players revived, and then five prairie po poppy pra prairie poppies picked. The bounty hunter, we got two bounty targets tagged with tracking arrows, three more than one bounty target brought in at once, and then one player bounty collected. The trader roll, we got three donated deadly predator carcasses or skins, seven medium carcasses or uh, donated to uh, crypts. Then we got two resupply missions completed. The collector roll, we got three American wildflowers found, six collectibles collected, and then three family heirlooms found. The moonshiner roll, we got two crafted toxic moonshine, 4827 distance moonshine wagon travel on a mission. Then we got three Moonshine Bootlegger missions completed. The Naturalist roll, we got two Blending Tonics crafted or used. Three Desert Animal samples taken. And then Don't Kill Any Animal for 24 Game Hours. Alright, you guys have the opportunity of earning 11 gold bars each and every single day. There's only one way that you guys can actually earn 0.5 gold bars per daily challenge. And that is to make sure that you've completed at least one daily challenge for 21 real days in a row. So make sure that you guys go ahead and do that for 21 days it's pretty easy to get at least one done every single day it literally takes longer to log into red dead online than it does to take probably than it does almost every single day to complete the easiest daily challenge now in order to earn up to 11 gold bars you need you need to unlock all of the current roles and then be at least a rank 10 and you'll get actually access to 15 of them you can only complete nine so if you only got three of the roles and maxed out at rank 10 or got to rank 10 in each of those roles you would have actually a nine as well. The nice thing I like about the roll daily challenge um, section is that you get to pick and choose whatever nine kind of fit your play style. So that way you guys can kind of pick and choose what are the easiest for you to complete each and every single day. Because in the daily general challenges, you don't get that opportunity. You have to complete all of them if you want that bonus. All right, let's move on. And let's go ahead and start with one alligator skin. Now, 
I hope that by now everybody knows that Bayou or Blue Water Marsh is the area that you guys want to go for this. Um, you can fast travel to Saint Denis and then head north, or you can actually basically fast travel right to Lagra, and you're going to be able to find alligators right around there. You only have to kill one of them, and then that's all you got to do, and then that's pretty much it. So there's that. Uh, we got three cooked season big game meat. Now, big game meat you're actually going to get from alligators, which is really nice. So once you skin one of them, especially if you maintain a perfect hide or a perfect skin, then you will get like four, three to five pieces, depending on if you're lucky or not. And you only have to cook three of them. So then you will need some form of herbs, which the three that you need to make the seasonings are thyme, oregano, or mint. And you can find those... For the most part anywhere mint is going to be a little bit more specific because it's usually around bodies of water or pretty close to water that is but but thyme and oregano can be found literally everywhere except for in the very north of amberino which is the snowy area so you just got to find a campfire and then cook those together and that's all you got to do pretty easy otherwise if you guys got the, like the wilderness camp or if you know where all the campfires in around the cities are there's one in, there's a couple in san Denis, there's one in valentine there's one in Rhodes. you have your wilderness one you have your camp camp where crips is at that you can go to or a couple of the random ones that you might find along the way out in the wilderness we got four coyotes skinned uh there's a lot of coyotes pretty much right where i'm at there's a lot which is in the heartlands right outside of emerald station uh, this is where my moonshine shack is. I almost always seem to end up back here almost every single day. I really don't know why, but I seem to come here quite often. I spend a lot of my time in the Heartlands anyway, or in the new Hanover area. But yeah, you can find a lot of coyotes right around where I'm at. You can also find them around Blue Water Marsh as well. Uh, if you're hunting alligators, they're not usually in the swamps themselves. They're a little bit more north. So if you're looking at the map, you would go north of like blue water marsh area and that's where you're going to find them uh or north of the road right where it says blue water marsh that's where you're going to find it so where there's water you won't typically find them but just a little bit north you will then we got five flying birds killed on a moving train so the first thing that you guys got to do is find a train i'm just right outside the station em emerald station anyway but you got valentine emerald station you got Rhodes, sand and knee uh you can go up to ansburg if you want to you can go to mcfarland's ranch armadillo things like that and then just wait for a little bit and the train should show up i'm actually really surprised that even when i first logged in until now i haven't seen a train go by the station typically by now a train has already gone by but nothing yet and that's really strange so i'm not sure what's taken the train so long so hopefully that's not been glitched out as of late then we got, uh, and then you just got to find five birds. So I would recommend doing this during the day because it's easier to see the birds and also uh, a lot more birds are active during the day. Then we got one hunt the leader completed. So you'll have to be in a posse in order to complete this one. Uh, but with the limited amount of people that are in lobbies right now, it might be a little bit more difficult to participate in this one. So this one you might have to just kind of not do and just completely let that go off for today. Then we got three players revived. The best way to do this is actually with two other friends or two other people. So one person is going to be in the posse and one person is going to be outside the posse. And then you would rotate by doing this. You're basically going to have one person shoot the other person with a varmint rifle. And then the other posse member will revive them. And then, then you would basically rotate that so that everybody takes a turn. And then you'd revive them three times. And then move on to the next one so this one will take a little bit more you can do this in showdown as well but it's a little bit more tricky and then we got uh, five prairie poppies pick now i'm gonna go down to armadillo in order to actually uh, not armadillo yeah armadillo uh for this one um i usually don't like show off this location very often uh but pretty much the only place that you guys can actually find the prairie poppies is going to be right outside of armadillo between here and mcfarland's ranch or in the Great Plains area. So this is what we're going to focus on today. So this is going to be like the first location. And then all these places are where you guys are roughly going to find uh, different prairie poppies. So there you go. I mean, I'm going to give you guys a ton of different locations that you guys can actually go to in order to find a whole bunch of prairie poppies today. So there is literally tons of them down in this area if you guys want them so uh that's pretty much and there's actually more believe it or not you can go further south and find some more down in here you can find some a little bit more to the east but i think that's all the further i'm going to be able to mark for today unfortunately 
All right, that's it for the daily general challenges. So let's go ahead and move on to the uh, bounty hunter role. We got two bounty targets tagged with tracking arrows. This was, does require you guys to purchase a pamphlet, which I would only buy the pamphlet if you guys had a lot of money and a lot of money to spare. If you guys are trying to save your money up and buy something else, then buy that something else first. This only The only time you're ever going to use tracking arrows is for the daily challenges. And it seems like a lot of people are kind of staying away from the bounty hunter role anyway. So this is probably not advisable to do this one. I don't do it. And I haven't done one of these tracking arrow ones in literally forever. It's probably been months since I've done my last one. Um, and then you're going to, once you buy that pamphlet, then you got to get some items together and then craft them up on a campfire. And we got three more than one bounty target completed, um, brought in at once. So these two will actually require you guys to mostly be with other players. Um, one's in the same posse and then one would be outside of the posse. Uh, but they can still be friends. So try to find someone else that has this one's exact same one that you do. And you guys can actually do this together. So you're going to look after like two or more of the groups. So more than one bounty target brought in at once. That's the easiest way to do it. You can also do it by yourself by killing both targets, dragging one back on with your lasso, and then one putting one on the back of your horse. That is an option if you want to do it solo, or you can use your hunting wagon. It's kind of up to you what you would prefer. It's just a little bit easier to do with somebody else. And then the player bounty collected. I've gone over this many times recently. It's come up a lot. I don't really know why this one keeps coming up so often as it has. But you're going to want to do this with a friend, not in the same posse. Your friend's going to kill you. You're going to press charges. You're going to save them from the bounty hunters, the NPC bounty hunters. And then when the player bounty is offered... You're going to basically take them to the sheriff. And then you're going to return the favor by you you killing them. They press charges on you, etc, etc, etc. Next one is going to be the trader roll. We got three donated deadly predator carcasses or skins. So this is going to be alligators. You have to go and skin an alligator anyway. So that's already one. I would park literally park your camp in Blue Water Marsh or the Bayou NWA. And then go ahead and kill multiple alligators in order to get this one on. Otherwise, you guys can go after wolves, bears. It doesn't matter if it's black or grizzly. You can only get one pelt at a time anyway, or you can go after wolves as another opportunity. Then we got seven medium animal carcasses donated to crypts. So medium animals, anything on the side of the horse. So you got basically ducks, geese, rabbits, raccoons, Virginia possums, things like that. And then we got two resupply missions completed. So basically you're going to have to wait about a half an hour in between each of these resupply missions, plus the time that it actually takes you to do that resupply mission. So you're honestly looking at about a 45 minute period to do the resupply mission so it's up to you if you really want to focus on the trader role or not the collector role which is the madame nazar role which we're going to go over madame nazar's location here in just a moment uh we're going to go and uh, we got three american wildflowers found which american wildflowers will be a part of cycle number five and then the family heirlooms will be a part of cycle number six and then by that time You'll have got your six collectibles collected, but if you're skinning alligators, there's a good chance that you guys will actually receive a collectible from looting NPCs. It's possible. Not saying you will, or if it uh, happens, but that one is definitely a glitch. You might not actually get a collectible, but you'll get the reward for it. Uh, not, but not the, but maybe not the item. So just sometimes you can get lucky enough to get it. Sometimes it's not. It really just kind of depends. But if it was an actual like, uh looting from non-player enemies and i would definitely recommend going and skinning alligators for that one but mad Mazar's location for today is actually going to be up north and north is by ansburg for today making ansburg your fast travel destination of choice so hopefully this location for mad Mazar for today in the video does help you guys out so once you're done with that collector roll just bring your items up here and sell them to mad Mazar so that you guys are prepared to do more collecting in the very near future all right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one, and that's going to be the Moonshine roll. We got Crafted to Toxic Moonshine. So, this again, this will require you guys to purchase a pamphlet. Not worth it, in my opinion, unless you got a ton of money. If you're trying to buy something else, buy that something else first. Uh, we got 4827 Distance Moonshine Wagon Travel on the mission. This is going to be equivalent to two deliveries of Moonshine. So, this is going to take a little bit of time because you got your first initial setup, your delivery. Then you got to ride back to the cabin your shack and then restart it and then wait for that to be completed and then do the delivery so if you haven't had a batch already brewed and started then this might take you over an hour to actually complete so it could take some time and then we got three moonshine bootlegger missions completed you can either do these naturally around the world which i run into these all the time or you can actually start them um right off the bat by going and talking to maggie at the moonshine shack 
And then last but not least, we got the Naturalist roll. We got two Blending Tonics Crafter to use. Just go and buy them from any of the Harriet locations and then use them. I would not recommend buying the pamphlet. I think all the pamphlets, for the most part, through Harriet are a complete waste of money. Even if you have the money, don't buy them because you're going to spend more money and more time in the long run than you will just buying them when you need them. Uh, then we got three desert animal samples taken. So whatever is the easiest for you guys to complete. Nice thing about the desert animals is there's a lot of opportunities. Color pickeries. You got the Baja uh, pronghorns. You can go for the bucket or the doe. Um, armadillos or iguanas all are in that category. And they're all really easy to find down there. And that's going to be when you're looking for the prairie poppies down by armadillo. And then we got don't kill any animal for 24 game hours. So basically just be as careful when you're riding around because if you do get a kill on a horseback, then that will restart this countdown and you don't necessarily want that. So maybe just kind of sit in the still kind of like what I'm doing right now is probably the best opportunity for you unless you're just super, super careful unless you just really don't care about this daily challenge. But that is everything done, gone over and covered for today. I went over everything uh, with the collector roll. We've got all the different daily challenges and also Madame Desire's location all the way. But if you guys do have any questions regarding anything that we went over, by all means, leave a comment down below so we can do our best to help you guys out. But if you guys did help find this video helpful or enjoyable, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. But until next time, YouTube, you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it. And you guys, stay gaming.